got a couple things on Noah. It's interesting that Genesis 8-4, guys, says that the ark did not come to rest on the top of Mount Ararat, but it came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. What's the significance of that? I think that makes a difference. The word har here, the Hebrew word har, does it mean all the high mountains, like all of them are Everest, or does that also include a Hebrew lexicon definition, hills? And does the word kasa mean the fact is residing upon, in other words, over the top, or falling upon? Aren't those parts of the meaning? Start us off, Ken. If you level out all the mountains and the ocean basins, uh, you've got enough water to cover to a depth of uh, almost two miles. In other words, there's plenty of water to cover the earth. And when you look at mountains, um, we would say one way in which God ended the flood, in fact, I su suggest Psalm 104 might even allude to this, is the mountains rose, the valleys sank, water poured off the earth. That's why you find on the top of Mount Everest, you find marine fossils, you find them on most mountain, mountains actually across the earth. And those sediments usually continue in, in a massive way. Um, because they were laid down by the flood, they've been uplifted. That's why you see water lines and continents all around the world. That's why you see most river valleys far wider and deeper than present river systems require. In fact, all geologists agree the whole earth has been covered with water. They just don't, don't agree it was all at one time. And, and see, one thing I, that I do want to make a, a point that's important, those who believe in a local flood, uh, those who believe in, uh, sorry, millions of years, cannot believe in a global flood. Because if all the layers were laid down with the fossils that contain all those dead things and evidence of cancer and so on, if all that was laid down over millions of years before man, you can't have a global flood. It would rework those deposits. So that forces the hermeneutic to have a global flood, a uh, local flood. Hugh? Well, I mean, we do have old earth creationists who do believe in a global flood. Uh, well, that may be true. But, right. But, so. but, but, but they're inconsistent. Because once you hold to a global flood, you've got a problem with all those sediments with the fossils because a global flood is not a tranquil event. I mean, I think Norm Geisler holds to a global flood but a tranquil event, but it's not a tranquil event. But isn't the assumption that, that, that the sediments that, uh, that you see at Mount St. Helens that were brought up before, the fact is, is that the whole earth is not like Mount St. Helens? No. That, that, that's true. But the point is, we see catastrophic processes today that can lay down layers, and we've seen lots of other catastrophics too. What we're saying is, the flood was a massive catastrophe. Imagine what, what it would have done. Well, we're not denying catastrophes. I mean, we believe that the Earth's history is one of multiple catastrophes of vast nature stretched over the billions of years. We would also point out, we would agree with you, that yeah, we do see marine fossils on top of Mount Everest. But keep in mind, India is still moving north into Asia. And it was the collision of India with Asia that led to the formation of the Himalayas. Now stop right there. Assumption. See, we still see little movements today that we can measure, but you're extrapolating into the past and saying this built this, this did this, this did this. See, people need to understand we, we all have presuppositions that are determining how we interpret the evidence of the present. Understand, but these assumptions can always be tested. I mean, it tells us in the Bible, everything must be tested. We're not just to have blind faith. Our faith yeah. is to be tested. But you can't go back and test unique events in the past. We can't test a global flood. What we can do is look at the present to see if the evidence is consistent with it, we which it is. We can directly observe the past. As I've pointed out many times, that's what astronomers do. We directly witness the past and see what God has done.